Hey everybody, and welcome to the next uh, Flame Quick Tip. And this one is going to be on motion vectors and specifically creating your own custom ROIs that you can keyframe and customize um, that will help speed up um, really high res uh, stuff that just doesn't usually work with, um, with this stuff. So what am I talking about? Um, so let's have a look. So I've got this, this clip here, which I've shown in the breakdown previously. And this is again, that shot where we had to kind of tweak that girl. And if you see, and we do the motion vectors and we look at this and if we tried to do the cash range, if we do this, check it out. Okay. That's again, this is not, <laughs> not fun. It's slow. It's, it's freaking slow. So I'm going to stop that. It should be way quicker. Confirm. Um, clear. Good. Um, and then there is, of course, oh, we can use ROI. So if we press escape, select that, press F8, you see we can do this and we can go, okay, now let's just make it about the girl, right? And we'll do this and then do that. And it's like, great, this is, this is good. Um, but even with, um, as far, again, as far as I know, even with auto key on and we jump here further down, the girl's there. So if we do F8 and we pull this across, this doesn't animate. And I don't think it is animatable, which is just really, I, I don't get why that wasn't put in, but uh, I mean, it should be in there, but again, it's, it's crazy to me. Um, it should be animatable, um, but it's not. Um, so you might think, Okay, well then how do we get around that? Or do we just kind of make it coffee time? So again, it depends on what you, depends on the time you have. So in this example, um, I've, I've been able to do it using auto stabilize. So um, let's have a look at how it's done. So literally, uh, I'm gonna do that and then this, and there it is. So again, I've just done the stabilizing and then I'll show you exactly what I've done. So I'm gonna analyze this away. Now I tried, I tried doing this using, um, action and, uh, the, uh, the move UV vertex and perspective. Um, but I couldn't get it to unwrap. I'm sure it could, but I just, I found the, the easiest result that worked for me was using the auto stabilize. Um, I'm assuming the, the 2d transform should work too, should. Um, but yeah, I just got better results with, um, with this as opposed to kind of I was really messing around with the other one and just wasn't doing what I wanted it to, whereas this, um, the auto stabilize works. So the main thing is you need a solid track and we do, we have one. So if I just do F4, you see, that's a good track. Now for this, we want it to be about, so we really want to make it smaller. So we'll pull the width all the way down and the height all the way down, um, even smaller. And what we'll do is I'm just going to shift in there just so it's only showing her keyframe. And we're gonna do that and pull that up. And I'm gonna put this somewhere in the middle. And now let's scrub along and see as she goes off, cool. She gets, she gets wiped off, but by the black, that's good. And then we'll do this. And she gets wiped off before that, perfect, perfect. And as you see, this is this is only 838 by 525. So let's, um, let's try this and see if it works. So I'm gonna do, go here and then go action and do here and you see it's just a nice small little action and again let's do the uh motion vectors pull that out i mean you can even see how much quick that is and let's just do cache range and you can see it's chugging through a lot quicker like a lot quicker i'm gonna let it keep doing its thing again this is like uh Again, this is like I was from the, like I've spoken before. This is worst, worst, worst case scenario. This is 15 seconds worth. But you see it's chugging through. This is a lot quicker even than HD in previous renders. So I'm going to let this do this thing. I'm going to go up to like 50 frames just so we can kind of, you know, you'll get the point. Um, but again, the, the, the speed up on this compared is just exponential. So I'm going to let it stop at 20. So I'll go there, 19, 20. I'm going to stop confirm and we'll go back to the start so yeah this these are the frames that is computed right that's great so let's say this is our frame that we want to paint so i'm going to go here i'm just going to go p put that down there it's going to add in a little elbow and let's just quickly do a recursive clone 
just gonna zero that out. Save that. And zero that X out. Again, it's not meant to be a work of art. I'm gonna go up here. And say that's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go mux, I'm gonna freeze that, and then I'm gonna go here and make that the output. But then I also like to do this, which is see what's going on and what I need to kind of cover. So I'm just gonna pull the G mask out, just cover more than I kind of need to, and see where we go from there, just to kind of do this the way I want. And that'll do. And let's just um, turn off icons and let's just blur that out a little somewhere. Somewhere there. Yeah. All right. So from here, again, let's add. That's already been frozen. Let's add in that as the front, that as the mat. And let's do our projector. So we're at frame 20. I'm going to press P, pull that out, reverse parent that. And again, just going to go to projector and put that back to zero. And there you go. And let's go to rendering. And let's go tracking add. And you see that's added in perfect, right? And we'll go output and we'll enable the projectors mat like you're used to. Now let's uh, duplicate this. So we'll dupe that. So auto stabilize and we'll go front and mat, mat. And then we will go negate stabilization. And what we want to do is we're going to go back to the actual size of the uh, source, so 3200 by 1800. So I'm going to double click on that, go 3200, and then the height, and go 1800. And by default, if we just do uh, all those and then difference mat, uh, well, let's do, I like, I like doing comp better actually. So I'll do that front and then back. And we'll just do difference. There we go. So let's, so here, so 15 is the frame we want. And again, if we just go in here, I'm going to alt click on these values because I don't want those offset. Um, alt, alt, and there we go. And if I set that as a context, spacebar two, and let's pull this over here and then pull it down and pull it across and just kind of eye it in. And again, if I go 1500, see if that gives me better. And let's do 262. See, it gives me better values when um, when it's not in those weird, crazy float values. So I'm going to go 0.1 other way, point down. There we go. And then 0.1. Yeah, I mean, kind of where it was was fine. And if we scrub through, uh, again, we didn't do to, to that, sorry, we didn't do past 20, but you see this will work if we scrub through it even further down once it updates. And again, considering this is a motion vector at that higher res, this could be a lot worse. The, the wait can be a lot longer. But again, you'd, you'd catch the whole thing if, again, it's just for the, the purpose of this. I just wanted to kind of show how much quicker it can be. So I'm going to stop the render actually because it's getting painful. There we go. Now let's just jump here. But you see it'll, it'll actually work Uh, it's kind of freaked out. Let's just go back here and okay, there we go. It hit it because I did the cancel. I get that. That's what happens when you cancel it. Okay, so if we go to 20 again, and you can see, and you see it, it will work and we'll follow with it because we've we've killed those frames and then duplicated and done the negate and put it back to the source, which is all we had to do. And you see, um. I mean, it could have done, been done a lot quicker of just by negating these. So this was negative 15, negative 15, and that's all it is. So if I shift, shift click these, you see it's exactly the same, same values. But yeah, that works now. And again, if we quickly chuck that over and just put that to blend, you can see how quickly this can be if you have all that done and cached, but now it's not, it's not cached all that way. See, 
Yeah. <laughs> but again, uh, a cool little hack for a custom, uh, kind of creating your own custom ROI. Now, uh, some of the things to keep in mind is I haven't used it where I've had to keyframe. So I don't know if, if I had to set keyframes for this, if, if it would work. But again, like this is just using one frame to offset one frame to set it back. I'm, I'm, that's where I ran into trouble was trying to negate, but um, I'm sure there's smarter people than me that um, kind of know the math for that. Um, but for me, this was the quickest and easiest way. So again, we've gone from, you know, again, let's just, just to kind of show how, how much different this can be. Let's just, just, just so you can appreciate this um, custom kind of ROI speed up. Let's do this again. So we'll go off the high res motion vectors, double click, and let's go case range. And this is what I'm talking about. Again, ROI works when something is kind of constant in frame, but please, please, please Autodesk um, allow a custom keyframe option if, if it's easy to put in. Um, again, we're at two. It's, it's painful. Again, this is why this is um, such a, a, a good hack. So again, all you gotta do is stabilize, get a good track, and then just change your, your output just to where your, your guy, whatever you want to paint out is, is central. Do your paint out, do your normal, turn that off and then go back to the start and unhide those. Do your normal paint out and then duplicate this guy, negate, and then put it back to the source res and then offset the position X, Y and use a difference just to skate up. So. That's gonna be it for this um, quick tip, guys. Um, I hope this is useful. I hope it makes sense. Um, and yeah, I really uh, hope it was useful. So yeah, um, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more.